Chamber. Uh, Senator Cummins had to go to a meeting, the Senate leader, uh, but he asked me particularly to send on his best wishes to you and again to say how welcome you are here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Senator, uh, Senator Van Turnout, and you have five minutes. Thank you very much, Cahir uh, and thank you for facilitating me speaking. And I'm sorry that I briefly had to leave the Chamber, but I was at the internal meeting uh, that also detained Senator Cummins. Uh, but I was here for your intervention at the beginning. Um, you're very welcome um, to, to the Chamber. Uh, welcome back, uh, as they say. Um, it, it's, I still feel relatively new. Uh, but the issues I'd like to talk to you today are in relation to the single market and in relation to the multi-annual financial framework and, and specifically on those issues, given your work on the internal market and given uh, what you said at the beginning. Um, as we know, 2012 represented uh, the 20th uh, year anniversary of the European single market and the development of the single market, I think, is a key priority and is a key priority for the Irish Presidency. However, we're all very aware it remains incomplete, and, and you mentioned some of the areas yourself uh, in your intervention where, where it's incomplete. And during the single market week in October 2012, uh, there was an opportunity there for the private sector and for citizens to engage um, on a personal level uh, on the European policy area, uh, on this European policy area and I just want to raise some of the issues that were raised there and maybe ask you perhaps you can enlighten us or, or share your opinions on the concerns that were raised uh, and there's four areas that I'm going to raise firstly is that access to the market of a host country can be restricted by national certifications or regulations that do not exist in the same extent in the home country uh, which for me goes against the principle of a single market um, and single area uh, secondly is in relation to cross-border procurement, uh, which can be a problem. And I know we're all in the age of electronic and online, but many procure procurement procedures uh, require a hard copy uh, to be delivered um, rather than using electronic means. Uh, thirdly, um, on the area of e-commerce, which is very pop popular at national level, but it is much more difficult internationally, and we're very uh, aware of the different regulations in relation to areas of consumer protection, which I know yourself, uh, data privacy, all of those areas. And um, it's difficult. So when you're talking about e-commerce, uh, the playing field is not even, it's not equal. Um, and the fourth area, which was a surprise to me, was in relation to European startups. Uh, that on average European startups only get half the amount of venture funding uh, than their US counterparts um, are entitled to. And to see is there ways that we can maybe redress that balance and ensure that we do have an even, play, even playing field uh, between the US and the EU if we really do want to start, uh, encourage startups. And I know Ireland is extremely. Uh, uh, we, 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 we do want to promote entrepreneurship, um, so for me this, this is an area. And I know many of these issues will be addressed, uh, or, or, uh, of these issues will be addressed by the Single Market Act, which I know is in the final stages of implementation. Uh, but it does, there always seems to be problems preventing its complete adoption. It always seems to be problematic to get it really to that uh, complete adoption. And for me, adopting this act should be expedited because it is a job creation opportunity for Ireland, uh, for the Irish Presidency, for the EU. Uh, so I would welcome your opinions on that. And then furthermore, as you have informed us, the Commission has recently introduced a second Act, the Single Market Act 2. Um, and I want to know to what extent does this second Act address the issues that were identified by the consultations that I've raised, those four areas, uh, in the Single Market uh, Week? Um, and what, to what extent does it fill the gaps of the first Act? And if you have anything to share with us on that. And the second area I just want to mention is in relation to the multi-annual financial framework. And obviously last week was a, an, an interesting, uh, exciting, um, challenging week for us all, uh, personally and uh, I suppose stamina-wise also. But for me, obviously, the negotiations that took place in Brussels on the multi-annual financial framework were extremely important at the European Council Summit, but I'm very aware of the Parliament's role. I'm also very aware uh, that you have previously stated that the budget must do more to stimulate growth in the European economy. And I know that the Parliament will be looking at the multi-annual financial framework and looking at the proposals on the budget. So I just want to ask you uh, whether, as a preliminary opinion, uh, whether you can tell us you'll be supporting the proposals that have been put forward by the European Council. Do you think they go far enough? Um, and I'd welcome your views on that. Uh, thank you, Cairlough, and thank you uh, to Phil Prendergast. Thank you, Senator. Now, that concludes the spokesperson, so I'd ask uh, Deputy Prendergast to respond, please, to the spokesperson. 
Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Les Kahirluk. And um, there's some fairly comprehensive uh, questions that have come up today. So what I will say at the outset, rather than be very specific and gloss over some important questions that were asked, each question that has been asked will be responded to each individual senator because we will uh, go back on the, the transcript of today and your specifics will be uh, 